Are you a business owner that could use just one more customer? Those empty tables, vacant appointments, idle employees, and expired merchandise are missed opportunities. What if there were a community that connects you to high value and motivated customers, giving you a competitive edge in the marketplace and increasing your revenue? Introducing Partners One. You keep doing what you do best, taking care of your customers, and we'll do what we do best, sending you new customers to take care of. Call us today to find out how Partners One can work for your business. Welcome to The Rocket Right Show, starring Hurricane Betsy Barnes and Dr. K. Solar, two busy blondes with their fingers on the pulse of all things Louisiana, events, health, leisure, entertainment, and more. It's The Rocket Right Show, and now, here's Betsy and K. Thank you for joining two busy blondes on the go, showing off life in Louisiana. In a moment, we're gonna tell you who this handsome mystery man is. If you're from North Louisiana, you probably know him. Or if you hang around the Capitol, you might know him. But we'll tell you that in just a minute. But we're really excited that you could join us because it's been a busy week. It's gonna be another good week and good news. Well, except for the little COVID increase, but we've gotta be careful about that. But we all know what to do, so we're not gonna belabor that point. Good. And so we are really excited because we're gonna bring you some delicious ideas and treats mm -hmm. from uh, Rouge Creole with Stick New Church, who's the general manager, one of our very favorite places. And if you go there, chances are you'll probably see one of us there. And you know what? They've got some mu new menu items, and I've tried them. He's gonna tell us all about it. So yeah, we love just because you've eaten there. there before, you hadn't eaten everything yet. Because there's right. new stuff. Well, yeah. true. And they always have new stuff. Yeah. And so we always love having them. We're thankful for their sponsorship. And so we're also going to talk with Charlie Galatas. And so let me just tell you, um, he's got a little seasoning that you need to try. Uh, it's sweet heat for your meat. And that sounds kind of crazy. Say. That sounds kind of crazy. There's a lot we could say, but we won't. <laughs> we're going to let him tell you. <laughs> and then um, we're really excited to have our good friend, Jim Bob Allgood. He has um, just multiple companies in the broadcast industry but most people know him from redneck adventures and what he's done all over the country and all over the world and you know it's always a good day to be a redneck i can't wait to start rednecking i know right are we going to do are, some more redneck adventures chances mm. are you're going to be seeing us on maybe a future show doing a little fishing and i don't know if we'll be just, necking but we'll be just no you know, snake grabbing that's all i can say <laughs> I, yeah <laughs> And so that brings us to our very first guest, and we're so happy to have him with us because he's a friend of mine and he's somebody that I really do admire. I love what he does in businesses and the way that he grows and rehabilitates different old um, buildings and just, just makes a difference everywhere he goes. He's State Representative Mike Eccles. He is from Monroe, West Monroe, and that part of the state. And thank you so much for coming to be with us. Betsy Kay, I'm so glad to be here. This is a, an extraordinary opportunity for you to have me on your show. And <laughs> look forward to telling you everything I know. Tell us every it single thing. It sounds like it's a lot, thing. too. It's a bunch. It's yeah. a whole bunch. Yeah, don't hold anything back. Well, uh, with a little bit of that uh, special sauce over there, I think we're going to have some <laughs> stories to tell today. And, and how about with this wine that I got? <laughs> I mean, I might have to have you try it. I brought. I don't Where, even know. Where's if it's my any glass? Good. I don't well, know what's well, going on. Hey, I, I'm going to pull one out in a minute. So I have that magic tricks, right? But I brought this. It matches my outfit, don't you think? I drink yeah, my that's wine. How she Spot on. I, I choose my wine to match my outfit, and Spot I think I did on. pretty good tonight. You know. Or if she's got a favorite dog, or we have a certain theme. Kay that's is very right. good about that, and and often brings cupcakes, boozy cakes, and boozy ice cream too. So tell us about the special session. The special session. You shocked me when you said you gaveled out. So we, you didn't just say, I'm going home. That special session's over. So this was a veto override session. The governor had vetoed 28 bills plus special projects in House Bill 2. Uh, the real crux of the session, though, was the Fairness in Women's Sports Bill by Beth Mizell, a Senate bill. Uh, that bill was debated yesterday in the Senate. House rules and Senate rules are a little bit different. All those bills that were to be debated yesterday in the Senate under a rule suspension were to come to the House today, and then it was our job to work on trying to get those overrides knocked mm -hmm. out today. So out of everything in the Senate side of the House yesterday, 
Eight bills were debated in the Senate. Only one of them made it out of the Senate for potential override, and that was the Fairness in Women's Sports Bill, basically not allowing a biological male to go and compete in biological women's sports. Uh, it was a, a conservative bill, I would say, in many, many ways to protect women and women's sports and the integrity of that. That bill came to the House today, and the bill ended up failing. Um, 68 votes for, and then the remainder of the votes against. And you need 70 votes, a supermajority, to override a governor's veto. Now, that was significant in several different ways. One, that we actually had a veto override session. It's never happened in the history mm -hmm. of uh, modern day history as it relates to the legislature. So I think you're seeing the legislature truly provide some level of independence. That's yeah. never happened before. Yeah. Uh, and then to get the bill out of the Senate and it to, to die in the House is a big disappointment. Uh, obviously, the House had a series of bills, too, that they were working on trying to get overrides on. But once we hit that threshold and what I would consider probably the most significant bill out of 28 bills that he vetoed, uh, I think we realized very quickly that if we spent any more time there, we'd probably be wasting it because the uh, many of the Democrats were not going to vote with us, and we still needed two votes to get that override with the Republican delegation. So for people who didn't understand what was going on with that particular bill, that means now that biological males can compete it, in biological female sports, even though uh, Louisiana High School Athletic Association already has a rule that prevents that. So there's no statute in place to, to stop it now. And that was what this bill would have done, was just make it preventative that biological males could per, per participate, basically, in female sports. That was very controversial, and I think Louisiana got a lot of national attention for that. Absolutely. This same bill has been passed in other states, or similar bills has been passed mm -hmm. in other states, so we just considered it a very logical, conservative bill that would have protected women's sports. I think we've made great stride in women's movements over the last 30, 40 years, and this is just one more thing to provide additional protection. So, you know, you're seeing this at the national level. Now you're seeing biological males now participate in Olympic Games. You're seeing it in the Northeast in major women's sports where there were records set that are being just completely wiped out by biological mm -hmm. males now competing. And I, I don't think it's fair. And it lost by one vote. Two votes. Two votes. Two votes to, to get rid of the override. Uh, and it was odd because in the Republican delegation, we have 68 members. There are two independents, and then the rest are Democrats. Well, 67 Republicans voted in favor of this, so one Republican kind of abandoned the party. Uh, we had two independents that voted against it, and then we had one Democrat that actually voted with this, uh, with us, Francis Thompson out of Delhi in, in northeast Louisiana, so we appreciate his support. Uh, and it's an issue, really, I think, that's going to come back again and again and again. Uh, the mm -hmm. author's already sent out that they're bringing the bill this next session, and so I'm going to support and co-author the bill again, along with many of my other colleagues. The irony is, when this bill originally passed, 78 members of the House of Representatives voted in favor of this bill. 78. So now, a month later, we're at 67 or 68. Uh, it's disappointing because those that believed in it and even co-authored it eventually took their name off of it. And so there was some backdoor politics going on. Mm -hmm. and it really became politics over people, and that, that's disappointing. Yeah. Well, there's always an entertainment factor in anything that goes on in any legislative session. Absolutely. So, but y'all came in on Monday, ended on Wednesday, and so... That won't cost taxpayers a whole lot of money. No. It could have drug out a lot longer. And I think a lot of the narrative you're going to hear from the other side is that, oh, we wasted time and money. I don't think so. What I think is you saw true independence from the legislature, and we have never seen this before, not in 50-plus mm -hmm. years. And I think you're going to see more and more of this. And one of the bright spots out of this, and I'm really excited about this, in the House side, the Republican delegation stood together almost unanimously and again, functioning as an independent unit. That unity will breed future success, and so I'm very optimistic about the future because of that. That's a good outlook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's a good outlook to have. So in addition to what you do with the legislature, you also have a health insurance company, and you also have, he's so busy, He's so busy, we're lucky to get him. Um, you also have Eccles at 8, which is a radio program that you've been doing for 19 years. You've been in radio broadcast, so we have that radio soul among us. See, I'm not used to being on TV. I've got a face for radio, <laughs> so I'm glad to be here and doing it and having a mic in front of me. But, you know, to, to have all the bright lights, it's a different experience, but, but a beautiful experience. You're very <laughs> kind. You're very kind. So tell me some of the things going on in West Monroe. We've got about... 
you know, three or three minutes or so. And I want to know, because there is a lot of good things going on in the northern part of the state, the people in the southern start of the, part of the state just aren't aware of. You know, I'm highly optimistic about our region. Over the last three or four years, we've elected new leadership, new mayors, new le legislative leaders. We have a good political environment, and the business environment is really good. Uh, we have a new medical school, the uh, Edward Via Medical School, or School of Osteopathic Medicine. So basically, mm, we're great. now teaching doctors how to do medicine in Northeast Louisiana. This will help fill some gaps in the healthcare space, and that's really important for rural healthcare. I know uh, we're all kind of rednecks at heart. Uh, I was born and raised in Northeast Louisiana, yeah. so I can put that moniker on myself. I know one of your other <laughs> guests is going to talk about that, but but filling that void in rural health care mm -hmm. is a big big opportunity for us and this new med school is going to do that and you're going to see the ripple effects throughout louisiana's health care system for years to come so that's a big bright spot yeah and it's going to draw people from other states to come to school absolutely well. in fact of the 150 students that come in each year about 60 or 70 percent are from out of state but the real yeah. winner is you keep 30 yeah. percent of homegrown doctors those folks stick yeah. right well, nobody wants to leave Louisiana. I mean, a few people do, but not with the good food us, and all the good us, times. That's right. That's right. You feed us. That's right. Take us to a festival or two. We're, Absolutely. We're here for life. Absolutely. Um, so tourism has been a big thing in North Louisiana, and a lot of sports tourism mm -hmm. in your neck of the woods, and that's really helped keep restaurants, hotels, and others open. So if you look throughout COVID, Northeast Louisiana, the Monroe, West Monroe, and again that whole regional market, our our numbers from hotel stays is up significantly higher than other parts of the yes. state and it's because of the tourism you're talking about uh, Ruston has a new you know multi-million dollar sports facility Sterlington, Sterlington mm -hmm. uh, East Washita Recreation District uh, ULM's put in some new infrastructure as well so we're really building a comprehensive sports network in our region yeah. not only in baseball but in tennis and in, in multiple other sports and then there's some other indoor facilities that are on the drawing board to be done in the next few years a huge one for equine tourism and livestock is the Ike absolutely so this huge arena yes, holds, I've been there. I mean, it's huge. It's like seven acres under roof. So a lot of people are drawn there. Well, will you promise me that you'll come back? I'd be glad to come back anytime. Come and I back. would welcome you all to tour up to Northeast Louisiana, and I'll show you a few things. I'll take you up on that. All right. Okay, you ready Sounds to Sounds good. I'll hop in your car. That's right. We will. And we're going to be right back. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. We're going to be talking with Jim Bob All Good with Mid-South Broadcasting, Redneck Adventures, and a few other things. He's really very calm. He's really kind of slow moving. But you're going to want to hang on because, believe me, He's going to cover a lot of ground. We'll be right back. Hurricane Betsy Barnes and Dr. K. Solar rocking it right. It's going to be all good. It's all good. That's right. <laughs> There's a joy of life you'll find only in Louisiana. A spirit of celebration that takes your senses places they've never been before. Where expressions of joy are an art form and our way of life. Where an abundance of good food, good times, and great music means there's more than enough to go around. Come one, come y'all. Come feed your soul in Louisiana. I'm John Goodman inviting you to visit louisianatravel.com and plan your getaway today. Young women are joining a movement to educate voters why? The need to represent our conservative and moderate values has never been more important. The values that made our nation the superpower it is. If you work, are in college, have children, every decision made at Louisiana State Capitol and City Council meetings impacts your wallet, your home, education, student loans, and everyday life. Become informed and involved through the LFRW Young Women's Initiative across Louisiana. Public policy impacts you and your family. Check out the Young Women's Initiative by emailing lfrwregion one vp at gmail.com or call 504-382-3474. We look forward to talking to you.